Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got a 2021 Ford F-350 behind me and it came in for a routine oil change. I really wasn't gonna film it. And when I went to go drain the oil and I removed the drain plug, I quickly discovered that the drain plug came out with threading. Now, this truck is fairly new, so a lot of you may be wondering, why are you replacing an oil pan on it? Well, what happens on these trucks, guys, is uh, this specific owner of this truck has a fleet of them. They do a lot of heavy hauling. They move stuff back and forth across the country. So this truck is getting its oil changed about every three weeks to a month. That's a lot of oil changes, even if the truck is fairly new, because if you think about it, that's 12 oil changes a year if you do it once a month, which means that drain plug is going to stress itself out sooner than later, and eventually will rip out the threads. So let's go ahead and start off on this. Let me get it up in the air, and we'll begin. All right, guys, so I'm underneath the truck now. As I mentioned earlier, I was doing an oil change on this, and it wasn't supposed to be videoed because I wasn't planning on making this video, just something that I discovered. So when I drained it, the drain plug came out with the threads. Now, there's not going to be any oil in here, or not a lot of oil. I went ahead and I put the drain plug in temporarily. I just kind of wedged it in there using my impact because I knew we were going to have to replace the oil pan. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is use my impact to take it off. Now, you shouldn't be using an impact on this, guys. I'm just doing it because this one's already screwed up. So I'm not really going to be able to hurt it. It's already pretty hurt. And as you guys can see, some oil is coming out, not a whole lot. Uh, I let it drain out fairly good and I capped it off before uh, I started this video. And then I had to get the okay from the customer to do so. So I'm going to let this drain out. It's going to take a while and then we're going to get started on removing our pan. So I've been letting this thing drain, guys, and to no end, it's still draining. Uh, I don't believe it's ever going to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing my bolts for my oil pan. Uh, now these are going to be 10 millimeters. They're kind of all the way around outline. We're just going to go ahead and zip these off. All right, guys, now that we went ahead and removed our perimeter bolts, we're going to take our little tool here. This is kind of like a gasket scraper wedger. And what we're going to do is we're going to go on this corner here. Now this was the easiest corner to access. That's why I'm choosing to go to this corner. We're going to stick it in the side here in between the oil pan and the block and you want to be careful what you're looking to do is just separate the silicone from it now I will say this silicone is very very tight on here guys this thing is uh, giving me a run for my money here so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and wedge this tool all the way around until I break the seal of the silicone all right guys so I went around the perimeter and I pried on it this took me a while um, I had left the bolt up here to kind of hold it up, but that thing was actually hurting me. So I took everything off, kind of went around in the angle, and I was finally able to get my oil pan off. And I will tell you, whatever sealant Ford is using on these pans, this is some tough stuff. I've never had a sealant be this difficult before. This stuff is just uh, ridiculous. I'm going to clean up my hands here because I'm covered in diesel oil. And then what I'll do is I'll zoom you guys in on this. So we're back now. This is underneath the truck. And as you guys can see, diesel oil is pretty dirty. Look at all that stuff that's in there. Now, what I like to do on these is I like to let them drip because this is a silicone gasket. Well, we're actually going to have to use like a gasket maker material. Uh, what I'm going to do is go in here with my grinder wheel. I'm going to clean off my areas, make sure all that is nice and clean. And we're going to try to break clean this off to try to get as much oil off as we can, guys. Once we do all that, we're going to go ahead and get our pan ready to install. Now that I've sprayed it off with brake cleaner, guys, I was going to take my grinder wheel and just clean this up, but I don't want to damage this aluminum. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my razor blade and I'm going to get off all of my big chunks first. Uh, I do have a wheel that won't damage the aluminum uh, for my actual grinder or angle grinder, whatever you guys prefer to call it. Uh, but it's not really that effective on moving these big pieces So I'm going to take a little bit of time and just take a regular razor blade and just scrape off any excess silicone So now we're back guys, and I'm just gonna show you this is my grinder if you guys will notice I have a very fine blue disc this blue disc is made for aluminum It doesn't take material off. It just cleans off surfaces So after we razor bladed our surface what we're gonna do is just like this and I'll show you guys a snippet of this because it can be pretty loud <laughs>
what I'm going to do is go around the whole oil pan doing that and it'll clean up the aluminum now. You won't be able to see it in this clip but when I finish up I'll bring you guys in for a closer look and you'll see how it winds up turning out. So we went ahead and we got our cleaning process done here guys. I just used my wizard wheel there, my grinder, whatever you want to call it with a very fine aluminum disc uh, just to clean up my surfaces and get my silicone off of there or gasket maker uh, depending on what you want to call it. Now the next step in this is even though that area is nice and clean there is going to be some residue. What I like to do is grab your rag or whatever it is that you're going to be using, spray some brake clean on it and what you're going to want to do is just go around the areas and it will pretty much reveal the nice and shiny aluminum. Now once we do this I'm going to let the car drain out a little bit more because we're still getting some drops of diesel oil guys and that's not good for a gasket. So I'm going to let that dissipate and then I'll show you guys how to set up the pan and get everything ready for reinstallation. Alright guys, so we have our new pan here. And the new pan shouldn't really need any sort of real crazy prep work. What I like to do before I apply my uh, gasket maker or silicone is I take a blue rag and I spray some brake cleaner on it. Now you want to get a lint free rag. You don't want to just use uh, something that will leave any residue behind. And even though this thing is brand new, it has been shipped inside of a cardboard box. I just like to clean it up, give it a nice quick wipe, and I make sure that I get around here with some brake cleaner. I'll take another clean edge, just spray some brake cleaner, and I will clean up this area separately, as you guys can see. You want to make sure you have no oil or dirt or anything on here. This is going to be your adhesion point. Brake cleaner is kind of like alcohol, it dissipates. If you don't have brake cleaner, alcohol will work too, uh, just something to keep the area clean. Now I'm going to take my gasket maker, I use uh, the right stuff by Permatex, uh, it's kind of being blocked because of my gun there. And what I'm going to do is just start laying a bead on here. Uh, you don't really need a really big bead guys, I'm not going to sit there and tell you guys how much silicone to put on here, but I want to say usually like a 8 millimeter bead is about all you would really need to be able to get this thing to seal up right. Uh, you don't want to overdo it so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back with you guys once I get that done. Alright guys so I got my bead put down on my pan. One thing that I like to do after I place my bead is I take a clean finger and I just smear it off and I level it off. Now the reason why I like to do this is when you put just a bead, let's say it's like an 8 mil bead in the center, when you press it up on the oil pan like this, it's going to basically spread out. What I like to do is I just like to spread it out evenly and leave about, a, uh, I'm not going to say a quarter inch, but a couple millimeters worth of uh, thickness on there. So when I put the pan, I don't really have to fight it and press it. It just goes on and then it'll still have enough sealing surface and just kind of spread out evenly. So we are back on our truck guys and we're going to take our new paper towel and we're going to spray it with our brake cleaner. Now you guys will notice on here that some oil has leaked out. So what I'm going to do is give this a final polish here. And what we're going to do is just brake clean the entire area. We're trying to get rid of any oil that may want to drip down. Because the gasket maker and the oil do not make a good match for each other. That oil will never allow the gasket to seal. So you want to make sure that this flange area where you're going to be bolting it up has a nice and clean oil free surface. Now you may want to do this a couple times guys, it all really depends. I work for my own self so I'm not in a rush. I take the extra time to clean this up right. I know sometimes if you work in a dealer you're not going to have all this time to do this so most dealer techs tend to do this part of the job fairly quick. However, I'm in no rush. My customer gives me the proper amount of time. I'm going to take the time to do the prep work so this thing doesn't come back and have any more issues later on. And that's just what we're after here is you just want to do the best job that you can do guys. Um, when it comes to me I really pride myself on this stuff because I get paid by customers and there's so many shops around the Chicago area guys that I uh, take it as a personal thing when people choose me over any other shop simply because uh, you know that's what basically keeps me going. So. I'm very prideful when I do stuff. I don't just like to hack customer cars together. Um, I unfortunately know so many places around here that will do just that. They'll hack stuff together and not care. Uh, and I just don't believe in that. So, all right. Now, everything is looking good. We don't have any oil. 
Now we have a limited amount of time. We're gonna grab a handful of the bolts here, guys. Just keep them in our hand. And we're going to have our gun ready at our disposal when we're ready to impact it on. So we grab our pin and before we stick it on, give yourself one more final inspection. And I go ahead and line it up and place it on. Now, I'm going to take some bolts and put them on here just to hold it up. But notice I'm keeping my hand. This hand has very firm pressure on it, keeping the oil pan from dropping down. And the reason why I'm doing so is because I don't want my oil pan to drop down and have oil leak in between the silicone uh, areas where I'm going to be mounting it. Because otherwise it just won't seal and I'll always have a leak there. So keep very, very firm pressure. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell in my voice. I'm actually kind of strained because I'm applying upwards force to this. So I'm going to go ahead and hand thread a couple of the bolts now. I kind of went all in the middle of every corner. And what I like to do is just lightly impact it. Now I'm using my gun, but I'm not going crazy here with it, guys. I'm just holding it up so it stays. Um, now that I got it to this stage, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put all of my bolts in. I'm going to tie them in a crisscross pattern, torque everything down, and I'll be back with you guys once I have all that done. All right, guys, so our new oil pan is installed. I went ahead and I torqued all my bolts down and everything. Now, there's one final check that I like to do when I install it. What you're going to do is grab the appropriate size for your drain plug. And what you're going to want to do is crack open your drain plug on it. Make sure that your new threading is nice and easy. Now, sometimes these can feel a little rough because they are new. And what I like to do is just kind of move it back and forth. And what you're going to want to do is just take your wrench on and just tighten it now. These do not require a lot of tightening, guys. That's pretty much tight right there. Technically, me using this is not really the best wrench because this is so long. You can actually over torque them. Uh, but, you know, if you know how to use it and you're very careful, it shouldn't be an issue. But always check this drain plug if it comes with your new oil pan because sometimes I find that they are tight, sometimes they aren't. You just want to make sure. Now that the pan is set in place, everything is torqued, and our drain plug is checked, make sure it was tight. What you're going to want to do is follow the directions on whatever type of gasket maker or silicone that you're using. Now mine is a five minute gasket maker. It says that it'll cure to a very hard state in about an hour and you can pour oil in this thing in about 20 minutes. Now I like to give it the actual hour, sometimes more. I'm going to let this thing sit on the stall for about an hour and a half to two hours before I go ahead and put motor oil in it and get it out of here. But at this stage, after you do that, you are all set. Choose whatever time frame you want to wait for your gasket maker or silicone to dry up. Like I said, I'm going to be waiting for mine. So I'm going to go ahead and close the video out here, guys. That's how you replace your oil pan or your lower oil pan on a 2021 Ford F350 6.7 liter diesel. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully it helps you out if you guys are attempting to do this on this particular truck or something similar. And with that said, guys, please comment, like, and subscribe. It definitely helps my channel grow. I'll catch you guys on the next repair. And until then, hope you guys have a wonderful day.